Good day. In this video, I'll be talking about the second part of T.S. Eliot's A Gay Wasteland titled A Great Game of Chess. So, the title A Game of Chess comes from Thomas Middleton's 1624 satirical play on marriage. Thomas Middleton, in another play titled Woman Beware Women, stages a scene in which the Duke's procurus, Livia, plays a game of chess with the mother while the daughter-in-law, Bianca, is being seduced by the Duke on the upper stage. As the game progresses, the seduction also progresses within the next stage. T.S. Eliot's Game of Chess is about the failure of love and sexuality in a modern marriage. A modern marriage is like an intellectual game, like chess, where cunning, strategy, scheming and seduction is more important than the emotions of the heart. There is no true love or intimacy. There is only a cold and calculative power struggle between the husband and wife. T.S. Eliot was an anti-feminist and he did not agree with the idea of women taking a dominant pose like a queen does in a game of chess. During T.S. Eliot's time, a great economic depression had taken place and many were men were left without a job. Since many young men had to go to war during the First World War that happened between 1914 and 1919, women had taken up office jobs. When the men returned, they were jobless while the women became the breadwinners. This gave a lot of economic freedom to women and, man, uh, and many men got their egos hurt. Coming to the first lines of the session, just check out the first lines. The chair she sat in, like a burnished throne, glowed on the marble where the glass held up by standard wrought with fruited vines from which a golden cupidon peeped out. Another hid his eyes behind his wing, doubled the flames of seven-branched candlebara, reflecting the light upon the table as the glitter of her jewel rose to meet it. From Satan, curses, Satan cases poured in rich profusion. The idea of a queen sitting in a burnished throne was taken from Antony and Cleopatra, Act 2, Scene 2, where Enobarus describes Cleopatra's journey through the river Sidness. The queen, in T.S. Eliot's poem, is lost in the artificiality of life. The real source of light is not mentioned in these lines. All lights are just reflections. Cupid exists only as statues that are too shy to face the queen. The element the session game of chess represents is air, the lines, and drowned in the sense or in orders is just about that. Drowning is a recurrent theme in the wasteland. Madame Sositrus had already predicted the death of predicted death by water in the previous session. The phrase the Sylvian scene in the poem is taken from Milton's Paradise Lost, Book Four from the part where Satan sees the Garden of Eden for the first time. The painting of Philomel in the Queen's room is in sharp contrast with the Queen's personality. Philomel represents the oppressed woman. According to Ovid's Metamorphosis, Philomela is raped by King uh, Teres of Kras, her sister's husband. Teres cuts out her tongue so that she doesn't speak. Teres later tries to kill the sisters. The gods feel pity on them and transforms Philomela into a nightingale. Her sister proceeds into a swallow and uh, Tereus into a hoopah. In Eliot's poem, Philomela, who is transformed into a nightingale, represents the voiceless woman. Her voice as a nightingale, jug jug, is not understood by anyone. The sound jug jug also represents sexual intercourse. Eliot mourns at how myth has turned into vulgarity in the modern era. The next stanza takes us to modernity and presents before us a rich couple. Now let's check out the conversation that the, this rich couple have. See, my nerves are bad tonight. Yes, bad. Stay with me. Speak to me. Why do you never speak? Speak. What are you thinking of? What thinking? What? 
I never know what you're thinking. Think. I think we are in rats LA. The wife sits these lines. The husband is silent. There's no reply from the uh, from the husband. Communication seems impossible between them. Their marriage has become dull and boring. They can no longer express their thoughts to each other. The wife sends, says, I think we are in rat's ally, where the dead men lost their bones. Rat's ally is the symbol of spiritual sterility. These lines also refer to the vision of the valley of dried, dry bones prophecy in uh, chapter 37 of the book of Ezekiel from the Bible. What is that noise? The wind under the door. What is that noise now? What is the wind doing? Nothing. Again, nothing. Do. See, there's no inverted commas closing it. It's, it's a symbol of incompleteness. You know nothing. Do you see nothing? Do you remember nothing? So there's actually nothing to talk about between the couples. So they are just trying to make a topic for conversation. They are middle-aged and they have been married for so many years and now they are feeling a sense of meaninglessness and there is nothing to talk about. And the woman is trying to have a conversation but uh, things are not going on well. I remember those are pearls that were his eyes. Are you alive or not? Is there nothing in your head but oh 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 that Shakespearean rag. Shakespearean rag is actually a famous American hit tune from 1912. It's a actually a jazz jazz song. So this is actually a sheer Eliot's parody of the times where even Shakespearean lines are misused. Classics are distorted by modern uh, singers, etc. It's so elegant, so interesting. What shall I do now? What, sh what shall I do? I shall run out as I am and walk the street with my hair down. So what shall we do tomorrow? What shall we do? The hot water at 10. And if it rains, a closed car at floor. And we shall play a game of chess. So here the line game of chess is coming. So the couple has nothing to do. So they start playing a game of chess. Pressing lidless eyes and waiting for the knock upon the door. So this knock upon the door can be death. So they are waiting for death. They are, they are living but there is no meaning in their lives. They are just waiting for death to come. Oh, it can also be a cha some sudden change in their life that they are waiting for. In the in the very last next stanza, we are introduced to another scene about marriage. This is about a young couple, Lil and Albert. So this is a conversation between Lil and her friend. And uh, again, T. S. Eliot is talking about another side of uh, barrenness. That's uh, happy. Uh, that's that's plaguing the modern times. So here, here are the lines. When Lil, husband, got demobbed, I said, I didn't mince word, my words. Demobbed means discharged. Here it means dis discharged from the army. I didn't mince my words. I said to her myself, Hurry up, please. It's time. So this is uh, actually uh, to tell us that they are in a bar. So this is uh, the bartender's last call before the bar closes. Hurry up. It's please, it's time. Now Albert's coming back. Make yourself a bit smart. So the husband is returning. He will want to know what you have done with that money he gave you. So here uh, Albert has given some money to Lil. So Lil can have uh, for some false teeth, but she used the money for something else. To get your yourself some teeth, he did. He he did. I was there. You have them all out, Lil, and get a nice set. He said. I swear, I can't bear to look at you. So here, once she has passed her youth and become. 
uh, unattractive the husband no longer is interested to her so interested in her so here uh, the marriage life has all become only about uh, physical attractiveness and no more can't I I said and think of poor Albert so the sympathy is always with the man even though uh, both are part of the marriage he's been in the army four years he wants a good time so he's after four years he's coming back and he wants uh, sex that's what here it means here and if you don't give it to him there there's others there's others will I said so if he does not get it from his wife he may go to a brothel, brothel or something like that oh is there she said something or oh, that I said then I will know who to thank she said and give me a straight look hurry up please it's time so again by the bartender so with the bartender's voice is like um, a call that um, life is short uh, just leave it up like, eat drink, drink and be merry and uh, actually this these lines are actually from real life um, T.S. Eliot's wife had a housemaid called Ellen Kelnod and the, uh, these lines are actually uh, this is actually a story narrated by uh, her and T.S. Eliot added it into this poem if you don't like it you can get on with it I said others can pick and choose if you can't but if Albert makes off it won't be for the lack of telling you ought to be ashamed I said I look to look so antique so she has become old and her only 31 she has become very old and they are actually blaming her for being becoming old so she's not able to live up to the social standards of her time social standards of beauty of uh, her time I can't help it she said putting pulling a long face it's the pills I took to bring it off she said so when the husband was away she had an affair and uh, she got pregnant and she had pills to abort the child so that's what uh, here if he, that's what's referred to here she's had five already so she she already had five uh, children from Albert and she's actually suffering because of that and nearly died of young George young George is their youngest son the chemist said it would be all right but I have never been the same you are a proper fool I said well if Albert won't leave you alone there it is I said what you get married for if you don't want children so that's the notion of the, that time so the this shows that the modern woman they are trapped between traditional notions of womanhood and modernity hurry up please it's time again it's a call from bartender well that sunday albert was home that sunday albert was home they had a hot gammon gammon is a kind of ham or bacon and they asked me into dinner to get the beauty of it hot hurry up please it's time hurry up please it's time Good night, Bill. Good night, Lou. Good night, May. Good night, Tata. Good night. Good night. Good night, ladies. Good night, sweet ladies. Good night. Good night. Good night. So this is uh, the last lines of bar the bartender when these ladies go out. So the, these lines actually uh, symbolize. It's very very similar to uh, Ham. The last speech of Ophelia from uh, the play Hamlet. So in Hamlet, Act 4 of Hamlet, uh, Ophelia leaves the king and the queen and she uses these lines. Uh, the, so this is actually a pastache or a parody of those lines. So how a classic has been uh, distorted in, uh, modern, uh, in the modern era. Like and subscribe to Denver's Den YouTube channel.